thanks so much for stopping by this is Amy I appreciate you coming back if you are new to my channel please make sure that you hit on the subscribe button hit the bell next to it so you get notifications whenever I post something new this is part of my brush stroke series which is system number three I am going to show you how I paint these violets um, it's kind of a little bit funkier version of a violet as opposed to what I would typically paint if I were doing a one stroke violet but we're gonna go ahead and do these in a set of three just like what I'm showing on here and just show you how I do it with the round brush I have actually ordered some different size round brushes because I think it would work out better if I had something a little bit bigger but anyways I'm going to go ahead and show you tonight with my number four which is a Princeton Heritage Series and a uh, fine line brush which is actually a Winston brush and it's used for fingernails but it really does a good job as far as the detailing goes paint I'm using tonight wicker white sunflower and cinnamon these are all folk art product baby pink berry wine and perfect purple for the leaves I'm going to use thicket and yellow citron sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly alright let's get started I'm going to dip my brush into the baby pink and then I'm going to, they say tip it, but for some reason whenever I put it down into the paint it doesn't seem to tip very well, but basically part pink, part purple. Alright, I'm going to start up here with the first flower. Do the pressure like I've done in the past few videos. Now if you want it to be more rounded. I'm trying to put pressure and just wiggle it a little bit, but I don't want it to be too thick, if that makes sense. And then these are basically just doing like curvy, curvy strokes so that they're not, you know, straight up and down or sideways. Then I've tipped it into the berry wine. And I'm just putting some pressure on it and then pulling it in like that. If you feel like you have too much, even though you're you know dipping it into the paint, you know, to do the um, pink, you can always go back in and add more. It's fine. I'm going to come over here and try to fold up into this one here. Alright, and then we're going to go down to the bottom of the flower. And I'm going to do it here, pull it up into the center. I'm going to do it again. Well, that may make a little bit more of a curve to it, like that. Put a little pink in there again. And then do the same thing here. Pull it to the center. And again, when you're doing this, if you want to put more, if you aren't happy with the strokes or you want to put more color in it, just go over it. Not a big deal. Or if you want to make the stroke wider, because I think these bottom parts you know, can be a little closer together and wider. You basically do that. I'm going to continue on with this part of the flower and then I will come back and add the detailing and one like this. I'm going to pull it up. There we go. For some reason during the demo I'm having such a hard time with this 
I think I did my sample a lot better. I'm not sure what the problem is. Alright, so we're going to do this, kind of leave a space, pull it. I want it to have a little bit more of the berry wine, have a little more of the purple, looks like, in it. Do it, wiggle, pull it. Okay, go back here and just do a smaller one and pull it. I want a little bit more pink in it, so I'm just going to do that, pull it. Again, I think I want more pink in this one. Yeah, they don't have to be the same, that's for sure. So, I'm not even trying to make them identical by any means. And then I'm going to load it with the baby pink, do more berry wine, do the bottom part again, place it down, Wiggle it a little bit, trying to get it around her bottom, but I'm going to pull it up in here. Maybe come here and turn the turn the handle a little bit. You just got to keep working with it until you get get the look you want with it. And like I said, these bottom ones are a little bit different than what you're doing in the top portion of this because they actually come together more. And I think they're a little bit, a little bit thicker. Like I said it'd probably be a lot easier if I had had the um, a thicker round brush, which hopefully I will have soon, and that will make a big difference. I either have too big or too small. Okay, and then I'm going to continue on, do my third one, and just kind of tipping it a little bit here. I'm going to do this, pull it around, do this, pull it around, and then do my little ones here. It's almost like if you don't think too much about it, it works better. Flows nicer, if that makes sense. And some pink, more pink to it. It's probably a little bit thicker than I really wanted it, but it's okay. That's all right. Pull it up in there. Make it more rounded on the edge there. Pull it up. What's your favorite flower to paint? Do any of you have favorites? I'd love to hear what your favorite one is. If you're able to share your artwork, I'd love to see it. I think it's just fun. Everybody's at different levels. It's just fun to to share and see what everybody's into doing. All right, I am going to then come back here, try not to get paint on my sleeve, which I'm really, really good at. And then I'm just going to come to here to the center of the flower and then just make these little strokes. I just, like I said, I just love how, how this handles, how this brush handles. All right, come here. Sorry about the barking dog. She's hearing my dog bark upstairs, so she has to join into the fun. It's like, ah, oh, please don't do that while I'm doing a video. All 
All right, so then I'm going to go back over these. Now you can thin out the white paint. Um, mine isn't really thin. I'm just going to try to put it on lightly. Just come down a little bit. Kind of like a little tent. That's what it reminds me of. I'm not sure why, but... Because you can thin your paint out if you want. Um, I just, my white for some reason is really runny already, so I really didn't, um, did not thin it out for that reason. This reminds me of a tent. I'm not sure why. All right, so I got this part on. Then I'm going to take the cinnamon and just put little dots in here, little detailing dots. And I'm just using the, the fine liner brush for that. Just put little dots. And then I'm going to take the sunflower and just kind of tap around it. And then that way that gives it some detail and helps you see it. Which I think, you know, makes it look nice. The next thing that we're gonna do is concentrate on putting the stem in and the Putting the stem in and the flower pet or the uh, leaves. So I actually bought these brushes to do watercolor painting, which I'm getting into. Love it. So basically, with this, I'm just dipping my brush into the the citron, the yellow citron, and the thicket. Not really any specific way. Just, oh shoot, I was looking at my other painting and I did that wrong. Sorry about that. I am going to come up here and go like that. I try to wiggle, wiggle my stems a little bit just to maybe give it some interest and cross it over. Go like that. And I'm using cold press paper. This paper I actually purchased for the purpose of, you know, doing my um, watercolor painting. Okay, sure. When I, I always forget to mention mention that. One important thing when you're painting is that if you you know, maybe make an error or end up doing something that you think, oh, that's not what I really wanted to do. You got to learn how to fix it. And that's basically what I did here. You know, I really didn't, didn't, was looking at something else and put my stem in the wrong place. So then what I have to do is come back here and say, hey, that's not really where I wanted it. I'm going to correct that and just put some vining and with it. And like I said, my work right here is just very basic, just to show you. I had a published artist say this to me, um, and I'm questioning how, you know, how do you come up with this stuff? She says, I just get a brush and I paint. You know, I try it in all different directions and see what I like the best with it, and I, that's what I do. You know, that's how I come up with what I'm painting. I thought, well, that's kind of clever. You know, really. I really wouldn't have thought of that. Okay, so basically what I'm doing, I'm going to do the 
on this one tonight I'm doing the round brush still for the leaves. Last night I switched over to a flat brush, but tonight I'm doing the round brush. I am just, you can still do the same technique if you want as far as like flattening it out and pulling or flattening it out more to get a more rounded look on the leaf tip. However you want to do it, whatever you feel comfortable with. I mean there is actually a process if you want to do specific type of leaves, but I really like one stroke leaving. To be honest with you, that's my favorite. So if you want it to have more of a, a pointed tip, that's good too. If you want to put them on both sides, you can do that as well. You see how easy it is though? It's just really, really easy to paint with a flat or a round brush. To be honest, most of my painting that I've done has been with flat brushes. And I'm not really sure why, because I see so many things that can be done with a round brush. I think they're very versatile. I think that's just pretty much what I felt comfortable with. So that's what I did. That's what I stuck with. Again, if you like my brush strokes series, give me a big thumbs up. Have any questions? If you can share with me your favorite flower for painting purposes, I'd love to hear from you. If you like this video, please make sure that you do share it with your friends or your followers. I am trying to build my channel. Anything can help. And on something like this too, I mean you can do more like vining and um, swirls and that kind of thing just to come out from the flower and maybe like I said give it some more interest in your painting. But for my purpose right now I'm pretty happy with the way it's going. And like I said these are crazy violets, it's not my typical what I would paint typically as a, as a violet, but that's okay. And I'm going to pull in here, try to add some green around my flowers, and maybe even add some more down in here. And anybody that follows me knows I like, I like leaves, no matter what kind they are. I'm loving the leaves. Loving the leaves. Now and again, this is not going to be identical to what I my initial demo that I showed you when we started the video. I'm kind of adding more. It's got different it's different. Similar, but different. I don't like things to be identical. I'm not a precise person and I don't like things to be identical. And if you're somebody that likes dots, I mean just think about it. You could add dots to your leaving. Your leafing. I'm putting a V in there. Um, you know, just to add, like I said, some more interest in there. But I think really, for the purpose of this video, I kind of like where I'm at with it. I think I'm going to stop here. And there you have it. Another flat, or I'm sorry, not flat, but round brush painting. Again, take a look. 
kind of quirky for a violet, but that's what I'm going to go with. And I appreciate you taking time to view my videos. If you like my brush stroke series, give me a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on my glass painting videos. I do a variety of things. I'm trying to come up with some new ideas for videos, so you don't want to miss those. And until the next video, I will see you then. Have a good one.